In the Victorian era, hospitals were often seen as places of hope and healing. But behind the scenes, disgusting hygiene practices were very common. Get ready to be shocked and disgusted as we delve into the disturbing history of hygiene in Victorian hospitals. Step back in time to the Victorian era, where hospitals were nothing like the clean, modern facilities we know today. These hospitals were dirty, overcrowded, and downright dangerous. There was a complete lack of understanding about the importance of cleanliness and the spread of disease, with doctors and nurses focusing on restoring balance rather than preventing infection. As a result, floors were covered in dirt, beds were infrequently changed or cleaned, and linens were reused, often stained with blood and other bodily fluids. Doctors and nurses also didn't wash their hands between patients and wore the same clothes for days. Surgeons could better be called butchers, as they wore their blood-soaked clothes with a lot of pride. And without modern sewage and waste disposal systems, the smell of bodily waste and decay was overwhelming and disgusting. Bed bugs. Hospitals were filled with dirt, disgusting smells, and horrific bugs. It was perhaps no wonder that a chief bug batcher received a higher salary than a surgeon at the time. In fact, bed bugs were so common in the Victorian hospitals that the bug destroyer Andrew Cooker claimed to have cleared over 20,000 beds of these disgusting insects in his career. Bed bugs were such a problem that this job was considered more valuable than life-saving work of the surgeons. Shocking, right? Sleeping on the floor. Unfortunately, the problems didn't end there. Hospitals were overcrowded with patients packed into beds with little space between them, making it easy for infections to spread and difficult for doctors and nurses to properly care for their patients. And with not enough beds to go around, some patients were forced to sleep on the floor or in hallways. Imagine the horror of being sick and seeking medical treatment only to end up in one of these dirty, overcrowded hospitals. It's a stark contrast to the high quality care we expect and receive today. Horrific Causes of Infection Visualize undergoing surgery in the Victorian era, only to be sent home to a slow, agonizing death due to the high likelihood of infection. Surgeons of the time were notorious for their lack of hygiene, with dirty, unsterilized instruments being the norm. Even the operating tables themselves were rarely cleaned, turning the hospitals into a breeding ground for deadly, post-operative infections. It was a death sentence for many patients, with some dying within days or even months of their procedure. But not only what happened on the operating tables led to a buildup of bacteria and infections, poor ventilation in hospitals also made it easy for infections to spread. To keep out of the cold, windows were often kept closed, leading to a stuffy and stagnant air that was ripe for the growth of germs and bacteria. This made it difficult for patients to recover from illness. For centuries, doctors believed that the rotten smell of pus that originated from the post-surgery wounds was a good sign of healing. They attributed the alarmingly high death rate in hospitals to something they called ward fever. Wow, the horror of having surgery in a dirty, disease-ridden hospital. It's a miracle that any patient survived at all. Public surgeries. Perhaps the most astonishing fact was that surgeries were often done in public. Surgery was not only a painful and terrifying experience for the patients, but also a form of entertainment for thrill-seekers. Theater-like operating rooms were packed with spectators who would watch and even cheer as patients screamed in agony on the operating table. During these public surgeries, hygiene was again totally overlooked, with the risk of germs spreading to the audience, or the other way around. In fact, the noise from the screaming patients and the loud crowd could be heard from the streets below. According to historian Lindsay Fitzharris, the operating room was a chaotic scene, with spectators pushing each other for a better view and constantly shouting out, heads, heads, for those blocking their view. It was a gruesome spectacle that showed just how primitive and inhumane medical practices were during the Victorian era. Untrained staff. If all of that wasn't bad enough, the lack of trained medical staff also contributed to the unhygienic conditions in Victorian hospitals. During the Napoleonic Wars, barbers were even enlisted as surgeons and were expected to perform operations. With a high turnover of staff and many nurses and doctors being untrained or undertrained, patients were often not receiving the proper care they needed. This made it difficult to effectively prevent the spread of infection and to properly treat the patients. 
In some hospitals, overcrowding was such a problem that temporary tents or other makeshift structures had to be used to accommodate excess patients. These structures were often poorly ventilated and prone to leaks, making it even harder for patients to recover. But perhaps the most shocking aspect of Victorian hospitals was the lack of proper sanitation facilities. Without indoor toilets or running water, patients were often forced to use chamber pots or other primitive methods of waste disposal. These pots were not always properly emptied or cleaned. Leeches for bad blood. Despite these challenges, some hospitals did try to improve their hygiene practices. For example, some hospitals introduced the use of antiseptic solutions, such as carbolic acid, to clean wounds and instruments. However, these efforts were often limited by the lack of understanding about how infections spread and how to effectively prevent them. One little known fact about Victorian hospitals is that they often used leeches as a medical treatment. Leeches were believed to help remove bad blood from the body, and they were commonly used in surgeries to drain blood from the wound. However, leeches were often not properly sterilized, leading to the spread of infection and disease. In addition, leeches would sometimes be used on multiple patients without being sterilized, further contributing to the spread of illness. Hot Iron Against Bleeding During the Victorian era, if a patient bled profusely from a wound, doctors would often use a scorching hot iron to stop the wound from bleeding. Can you even begin to imagine the pain and agony that this barbaric practice must have caused? It's almost unimaginable that anyone could have survived such a treatment. But believe it or not, even back in the 1670s, alternatives were being explored. In fact, one scientific journal even reported that the surgery was a cheerful experience for the patient. It's hard to believe that anyone could have considered this type of surgery anything other than pure torture. Surgery without anesthetics Before the invention of anesthetics in the 1840s, many patients were forced to endure surgery while seated upright in an elevated chair, unable to move as the surgeon's knife cut into their flesh. They were often restrained with leather straps to keep them in place, and the floor below them was covered in sawdust to absorb the blood that flowed from their wounds. Many surgeons even believed that pain was a necessary stimulant for keeping the patient alive. This is why opiates and alcohol were only used carefully and typically only administered shortly before a procedure, as the loss of consciousness was considered to be extremely dangerous. As a result, surgeons had to be quick in order to minimize their patient's suffering. One such example was Robert Liston, a surgeon operating in the first half of the 19th century who was known as the fastest knife in the West End. Scientific Findings It wasn't until the work of scientists such as Louis Pasteur and Joseph Lister that the importance of hygiene in hospitals began to be fully understood. Pasteur's work on the role of bacteria in disease helped to explain how infections could be transmitted, and Lister's work on the use of antiseptic techniques revolutionized surgery. Their work led to the development of modern sterilization techniques and the adoption of strict infection control measures, which have greatly improved the safety and cleanliness of hospitals. Today, we take the cleanliness and safety of hospitals for granted, but it is important to remember that it was the hard work and dedication of scientists, doctors, and nurses that helped us get to where we are today. Without their contributions, hospitals might still be in the disgusting and unhygienic places that they were in the Victorian era so we should always be grateful to them. This is it, everyone. What is the most shocking detail about Victorian-era hospitals for you? Let us know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you will be the first to know about our new videos full of crazy history facts.